Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of quite a few Tudor history books. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back in time to the reign of King Edward VI. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 2nd of May, 1550, Anabaptist Joan Butcher, Butcher or Boucher, was burnt to death at Smithfield. Now, let me tell you more about Joan, who was also known as Joan of Kent, Joan Nell, Joan Barron, and Joan Barnes. They couldn't really make up their mind what to call her, really. And what led to her being burnt at the stake in the Protestant Edward VI reign. Now, we actually know very little about Joan, but Kirk McGregor, in his article, The Theology of English Anabaptist Martyr Joan Botcher, writes that she was probably born as Joan Nell and that she came originally from Steeple Bumpstead in Essex. Love that name. Um, and that was known for being a centre of Lollardy, a pre Protestant Christian religious movement. He believes that she was influenced in her early life by Lollard beliefs. Joan appears to have been widowed by 1528 when she got into trouble with Bishop Tunstall, who was acting against Lollardy in the area. It is said that she escaped further trouble by recanting, even though she didn't mean it at all and had no intention of giving up her faith. In his book, The Radical Brethren, Anabaptism and the English Reformation to 1558, Irvin B. Horst described Joan as a lady of considerable social standing, possibly of noble blood. She possessed an uncompromising character, along with sufficient knowledge of the Bible, to dispute intelligently with the theologians of the time. And 16th century Jesuit Robert Persons or Parsons wrote of her being active in circulating William Tyndall's New Testament and described her as being a great reader of scripture. Joan was active in reformist circles by the 1530s and in his ecclesiastical memorials, John Stripe, who cites Persons, writes of how in dispersing Tyndall's work at court in Henry VIII's reign, Joan became known to certain women of quality and was more particularly acquainted with Mrs Anne Askew. Anne Askew, of course, being the famous Protestant martyr burnt at the stake in 1546. Stripe goes on to describe how Joan would tie the New Testaments in string under her apparel to pass around court. According to martyrologist John Fox, Joan also spent time visiting those of the Reformed faith who'd been imprisoned to give them encouragement. In 1541, she was in trouble again for breaking the Easter fast by eating a calf's head, and she'd also slandered the sacrament of the altar, and she was imprisoned for a time. By 1543, she'd remarried and appears to have been based in Kent. In the mid to late 1540s, Joan came to believe in an idea known as celestial flesh. She believed that Christ's flesh was not incarnate of the Virgin Mary, i.e. that Christ did not derive his humanity, his earthly body, from his mother, but that it was celestial or heavenly flesh. Her biographer Andrew Hope points out that this belief was unusual in England at the time and it's likely she picked it up from Dutch Anabaptist refugees who'd come to England early in Edward VI reign. She was arrested in 1548 or 1549 and convicted of heresy in April 1549. When she was condemned to death, she said, It is a goodly matter to consider your ignorance. It was not long ago since you burnt an askew for a piece of bread and yet came yourselves soon after to believe and profess the same doctrine for which you burnt her. And now, forsooth, you will needs burn me for a piece of flesh. And in the end, you will come to believe this also when you have read the scriptures and understand them. 
Joan wasn't executed straight away, but instead imprisoned for a year and held for some of that time at the home of Richard Rich, Lord Chancellor, while the Archbishop of Canterbury and Nicholas Ridley, Bishop of London, tried to persuade her to give up her heretical beliefs and become a more conservative Protestant. Joan refused their pleas. On the 27th of April 1550, Edward VI Privy Council issued their warrant to Lord Chancellor Rich to make out a writ to the Sheriff of London for her execution. But according to John Fox, 12-year-old Edward VI did not want to sign Joan's death warrant and Archbishop Cramner had to persuade him by saying that he would take responsibility for it before God. On the 2nd of May 1550, Joan was taken to Smithfield for her execution and there John Scorey, the future Bishop of Rochester and Chichester, preached. John Stripe recorded that when she came to die in Smithfield and Dr Scorey endeavoured to convert her, she scoffed at him and said he lied like a rogue and bade him go read the scriptures. She went to her death, standing firm in her faith. Andrew Hope concludes his biographical article of her by saying, It was not for her views, however, which despite the fears of the Edwardian establishment never became popular, but as a victim of intolerance that Joan Botcher was to be remembered, and by none more eloquently than William Wordsworth, in whose sonnet to her she is described as condemned by mandates nature doth disown. I'll share poet William Wordsworth's sonnet, Edward signing the warrant for the execution of Joan of Kent in the description for this video so you can read it for yourself. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 2nd of May, 1568, Mary, Queen of Scots, who'd recently been forced to abdicate in favour of her son, King James VI, successfully escaped from Lochleven Castle. How did she end up a prisoner there? How did she escape? And what happened next? Well, you can find out in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. And on the 2nd of May, 1536, Queen Anne Boleyn and her brother, Lord Rochford, were arrested and taken to the Tower of London. And I'll give you a link to my video on that too. I will see you very soon, in fact, tomorrow. But in the meantime, you can subscribe by clicking that button there. You can give me a like and leave me a comment and you can as well hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> For on this day in history, um, <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah.